Former Speaker of the House John Boehner gave a long interview to Politico, and boy, did he let it all hang out. <sighs> this is a really interesting piece. So he was asked about uh, Republican Trey Gowdy becoming the new chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Um, the previous chairman was, of course, Jason Chaffetz, and he abruptly resigned from Congress, presumably because he didn't want to spend all of his time uh, trying to defend Trump. Um, so the far right hoped that a guy named Jim Jordan would get that seat, would get that uh, chairmanship. Um, Jordan is, of course, the founder of the Freedom Caucus, which is the Tea Partiers, which is the furthest right caucus in the Republican Congress. Uh, so Boehner weighed in on all these different characters, and he said, quote, fuck Jordan, fuck Chaffetz, they're both assholes. He continues, Jordan was a terrorist as a legislator going back to his days in the Ohio House and Senate. A terrorist, a legislative terrorist. Wow. So what he's doing is he's saying these people who were to the right of me, who were raising hell, going back on their word, people who I couldn't get to vote the way I wanted them to vote, or say what I wanted them to say, he's saying that those people are assholes and legislative terrorists. Now, he continues here and he talks about um, far right-wing uh, commentators. So he says, I had a conversation with Sean Hannity probably about the beginning of 2015. I called him and said, listen, you're nuts. We had this really blunt conversation. He continues, I always liked Rush Limbaugh. When I went to Palm Beach, I would always meet with Rush and we'd go play golf. But, you know, uh, who was that right-wing guy? Mark Levin? He went really uh, crazy right and got a big audience. And he dragged Sean Hannity to the dark side. He dragged Rush to the dark side. And these guys, I used to talk to them all the time. And suddenly, they're beating the living shit out of me. Whoa. So, much of the piece here, I went through the whole piece, it's a very well-written piece, and it's a little too, it's in Politico, so of course the, the, um, the view of the article, the framework of the article is very, you know, pro-establishment, kind of sympathetic in a way to John Boehner, but it's an interesting read, it, go, it goes into a lot of detail about his time there and the things he says and what he's doing now. And the sense you get is Boehner is incredibly frustrated because he's now viewed as this weak, mealy-mouthed, um, spineless Republican. And the people who were in the Freedom Caucus, also known as the Tea Partiers, came in. And they just ran roughshod. They were uncontrollable. And again, what's interesting about the piece is it's in a way sympathetic to John Boehner. But the fascinating thing is, it's clear from John Boehner's own words and from his actions and from his experience and his time in office, and we've covered John Boehner uh, in detail, is that he's only mad at those people to his right because they're massively impractical. So, let me give you an example. There was a moment where John Boehner and President Obama did a grand bargain. Now, this so-called grand bargain, I don't agree with the framing and the name of it in any way, shape, or form, because it's not grand, it's horrendous. It was a deal wherein a Democratic president, Barack Obama, would sign off on massive cuts to uh, Medicare and Medicaid. And it may have even been Social Security. So it was a deal where a Democratic president goes back on, uh, you know, one of the major democratic victories and cuts the most popular programs and then turns around and goes, well, look, we did it because we had to do it and it's the only way for it to be sustainable and it saves the program. It doesn't cut the program. In the long run, it saves the program. Now, that's all bullshit. You don't need to cut those programs. Of course, you don't need to cut those programs. Um, but this is the problem with the, with the spectrum in the U.S., creeping to the right over time. The Overton window has shifted so far to the right that now, and Obama will admit this, he did admit this, uh, now today's 
Democrats, your run-of-the-mill Democrat in Congress, is like an old-school moderate Republican. And they're more than willing to do stuff like cut Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. Um, and they act like, what? No, that's totally reasonable. No, it's not. Back in the day, the Democrats would have said, fuck off, of course I'm not going to cut those programs. They're wildly popular. We created them, and there's no benefit in cutting them at all. So Boehner and Obama made a deal to do this grand bargain and cut entitlement programs. By the way, I hate calling them entitlements because they're not. They're earned benefit programs. You pay into it, you're getting out of it. Um, and what happened was the Freedom Caucus, the Tea Partiers, wanted more cuts. So you had this bipartisan deal, corporate Democrats and establishment Republicans, to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And then you get the, the Freedom Caucus goes, no, we want everything that we want in this negotiation. We're not going to budge an inch, even though we're the minority party. You have a fucking Democratic president, son. Really? That's what you're going to do? You're, it's impossible for you to win this standoff. It's impossible for you. What? You're really going to have a Democratic president who gets no revenue increases, but cuts these programs, and you're saying, I'm not going to bend an inch. Well, Boehner's frustration was, you guys are just stupid because you're never going to get 100% of what you want, uh, you know, without giving some ground when there is a Democratic president, you fucking morons. So, Boehner is not a good guy in any way. Boehner is a hard-right lunatic who was more practical in actually achieving his goals. If Boehner had his way, we would have already cut Social Security and Medicare. So in a way, we can thank the Freedom Caucus and the Tea Partiers for being so stupid and so obstinate that they go, no, you're going to give me 100% of what I want even though I'm the minority party. That can't happen. So because they were so crazy, it was a net benefit that we ended up keeping, um, you know, not getting the cuts and not getting the grand bargain. <laughs> Oh, that's wild, man. Oh, that's so wild. Another example was, do you guys remember the government shutdown? Um, where Ted Cruz did this grandstanding, and he said, because we needed to, to fund the government. There wasn't, you know, they didn't pass a bill. They didn't pass a budget that funds the government. So what Ted Cruz did is he used this as an example, as a, uh, an opportunity. He gives this long non-filibuster filibuster thing where he's up there talking about how, oh, we're going to fund the government, but the one thing we're not going to fund is Obamacare. So there's going to be no, um, we're not going to give the money for the Medicaid expansion, all the things in Obamacare that require federal money, we're going to fund none of it. So now the pressure's on the Democrats because we're going to shut down the government and say, hey, you want to open the government? Fine, but you get, you open the government um, if you agree to not fund Obamacare. So it's basically a way to try to tr twist the Democrats' arm and say, oh, we have to fund the government, so what are we going to do? I guess we're going to ax Obamacare to fund the federal government. But no, what happened was, naturally, because the Democrats, I believe at the time, had the majority in the Senate, and of course they had the presidency. Um, what happened was the Democrats said, you guys are crazy. You're the ones who are shutting down the government. You're the ones who are saying my way or the highway. So the American people are rightly going to blame you for the government shutdown. And of course, in the polls for that, however long it was, maybe two weeks or something like that, where the government was shut down, um, they got obliterated in the polls. The Republicans got obliterated. There, it, went, it was like half of their approval rating. It dropped half from what it was right before the shutdown. And apparently Boehner behind the scenes was like, you fucking idiots, I want to repeal Obamacare too. But what you're doing here is you're not going to get Obamacare repealed because the, pre the president's not going to sign off on destroying his signature accomp uh, accomplishment. They're going to point the finger at you and blame you. And the American people are going to go, yeah, it's the Republicans' fault because it is your fault because you're the ones who are basically saying uh, my way or the highway. And it happened under Newt Gingrich, too, where Newt Gingrich was this swashbuckling far right winger and he was in favor of government shutdowns. And the Republicans got their fucking approval rating decimated as a result of it. So Boehner's going, I remember what happened with Gingrich. Ted Cruz wants to repeat the same fucking mistake. And I want to repeal Obamacare, but you can't do it this way because you're going to you're gonna hurt yourself, the party, the cause, and you're doing more damage than you are helping. So again, this is Boehner agreeing with the far right on the policy substance, 
but saying you're not, this is so impractical and so wrongheaded that you're going to fail. And again, and Boehner was right in that respect. So, and by the way, he went on to say Ted Cruz was the most miserable son of a bitch he ever worked with. <sighs> and now same thing with Hannity. So he talks to Hannity, he talks to Rush Limbaugh, and he tells these guys, hey, idiots, look, I've tried to repeal Obamacare over 60 times, okay? You look at my list of, you know, dedication of far-right causes, they call me Tobacco Checks John Boehner because I handed out checks from Big Tobacco, uh, you know, on the House floor. Nobody can deny, I cut taxes left and right, you know, I don't compromise, I end up getting my way within compromises more than any Republican can ever get, especially because the Democratic Party are some weak, moderate, spineless bitches. So he's telling Hannity this, he's telling Rush Limbaugh this, like, no, no. Now, why? Well, it turns out that uh, in the case of Rush Limbaugh, at least, he takes money from far right-wing think tanks, and they take their money from Koch brothers and right-wing billionaires who agree with the Freedom Caucus and the Tea Partiers. So Rush is effectively paid to back up the Tea Partiers and to abandon the establishment Republicans. Um, but what John Boehner was trying to tell Hannity, what John Boehner is trying to tell Rush Limbaugh is, I am doing everything right. I'm doing everything far right. And you're just not giving me credit for it because you want to jump off a fucking cliff and you want to go work with the people who are going to fail at getting those far right wing thing accomplished, uh, accomplished because they're too extreme. So in other words, we agree on the policy goals. I actually get it done. They can't get it done. Look at the grand bargain. The, the far right ended up blowing up the whole thing because they held out to get 100% of what they wanted. So that's why Boehner's saying to them, you guys are idiots. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're going to get nothing of what you want. Um, and I'm going to get you what you want, but you're too busy portraying me as a spineless idiot. And I look, I said it every step of the way under, um, under Obama. You can go back and watch the clips that John Boehner is as far right as it gets, 100%. And the people who are want to strategize further to the right of him, they just don't understand politics. Like, they just don't get it. Like, the people in the Freedom Caucus, they literally didn't get, like, it, you are not going to get 100% of what you want when the Democrats are in control, when the Democrats uh, are, the, there's a Democratic president and the Democrats hold the Senate. So, the, I have zero love for John Boehner. Zero love for John Boehner. And I disagree with the piece portraying him as this, uh, you know, reasonable middle-of-the-road Republican. And that's the main takeaway here. The main takeaway is the spectrum has shifted so far right that John Boehner gets his fluff pieces by appearing moderate for actually being successful at getting right-wing causes through as opposed to people in the Tea Party who are just so blinded and, and so full of rage that they don't even understand that you have to plot your way to victories. So, don't, t I'm afraid that people are going to look at this and go, Oh, John Boehner, part of hashtag the resistance now. I mean, look at him saying that other Republicans are not cool. Yeah, but he is still wrong on everything. He is a giant corporate sellout. He still loves giving tax cuts to the rich. You know, this is a guy who's as far right as it gets. He was just actually savvy enough to get his way. Whereas the spoiled brat Tea Partiers are not smart enough to plot their way to get their way. So no love for Boehner. Fascinating article. And you can see his frustration because it's almost like his extremism helped birth this zombie this zombie, mindless, amorphous, even further right-wing movement that looks at him as spineless, even though he's like, what are you talking about? I was the guy. I am that guy. I am the extremely far-right guy. But now we just birthed this movement that is mindless and also super far-right. That just goes to show you how far off the rails we've gotten.